Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the Get a Lady. So we have already talked about how to evaluate or get up a prompt for an essay. And then we walked through, actually, I think we just walked through Get Up. Is that all we did last time? Okay, so today we're going to talk about how to come up with the introductory paragraph for that same essay. So just to remind everybody, the prompt that we looked at last time, this is Hadley for anybody who's coming in. This is my 10-year-old. He's a fifth grader, and he will be writing this essay. Um, so the prompt, I'm going to hold it up to the screen so you can pause it. It's this one right here. So not this one. We already did that one in an earlier segment that's also uploaded to our channel. But this is the one we're going to do now with the, with the yellow around it. And so it says, there is an ongoing discussion about the new school lunch guidelines. Think about both sides of the discussion. Then write an opinion essay in your own words supporting either side of the discussion. Are the new lunch guidelines helping students? Be sure to use information from both passages in your opinion essay. So Hadley and I talked about we get it, the prompt, right? And this is what we did for Gitta the last time that we were together. So you can pause and you can read that yourself if you want. Um, and I'll read it to you. So we came up with the genre, which is what the G stands for. It's going to be persuasive. We knew that because it asked us to give our opinion. That's our key word, right? Our important information from the prompt, Hadley came up with, use info from both passages, think about both sides, use your own words, write an opinion essay. The topic sentence, now remember, we always write out our topic sentence and then we leave a blank until we've read both passages. He did that. He wrote the new school lunch guidelines either help or don't help students because blank. After he read, after he read, he decided that he thought they did not help the students and he came up with his two reasons. Do you want to read your two reasons? So the new, we should read that whole thing, the new okay. school. The new school lunch guidelines do not help students because they still have the same non-nutritious nutritious foods and they have the same portion sizes for everyone. Okay, so he sided with the first author, obviously. And the first author's two major points were, A, they have the same foods, no, they haven't helped. And B, by the way, the portion sizes aren't, uh, they aren't differentiated for different kids of different ages. So those are the two problems. He put both of those in his topic sentence, which is awesome. When you can think of two ideas for your topic sentence, it makes it so much easier to write your essay. Because now you can write one paragraph about your first point and one paragraph about your second point. You know, so it's a really easy way to organize it because sometimes essays feels daunting because it's so big. But if you do it that way, you're like, hey, I already know what I'm going to talk about. So then he had to come up with who his audience was. And as we talked about last time, um, if you if it doesn't say anything specific, you can just write down teacher or formal, which means you're going to use your best language, your best vocabulary. So based on that, now we're going to write our introduction. That's what the segment's going to be on today. So now instead of just using our little paper, we have gotten advanced thanks to Amazon, and we now have a whiteboard. So when you're doing an introduction, we all for the intro, we use something called hit. Okay, H. I T. The H stands for Hadley. Do you remember? Hook. The H stands for a hook. And what's a hook, Hadley? Do you remember? Uh, something that catches the readers. Yes, catches your attention. So you might use a quotation from one of the articles. You might use a question. You might use a statistic. Just something that will grab the reader's attention and make them want to read your essay. So it should be something engaging. You're going to hook them just like you hook a fish. I here, because remember, important information from the prompt was the I we had to get it. This I is different. This is important background. So important background. In other words, this means why are you writing what you're writing? What's the important background information? Um, so here you are looking at like, why are you even writing this, this essay? And you kind of give background information. So for ours, it's some people argue that the school lunches have improved with new and different foods. Others argue that the foods are just the same. I think blah, blah, blah. But there's one thing I just did that you never have to do, Hadley. What is it? You said I thought. Yes! I'm so glad that you caught it. So I did that on purpose because it's something that so many kids do in opinion essays. They will start out their thesis statement with, I think that, or I believe that, or it's my opinion that. And you don't have to do that. Because if you didn't think it, you wouldn't write it. So anyway, so background information. Um, and then the last T is your thesis statement. So this is a little bit different than a topic sentence because this is the idea for the whole entire paper. 
thesis statement says this is what the whole paper is about. The topic sentence is going to be in each paragraph, saying what that each paragraph is about. So it's a little bit different for those of you who tuned in for our TEAG lesson that we um, uploaded previously. So first, we have to come up with a hook. So based on what, what let's brainstorm some different ideas. So based on our paper, we're trying to say that school guidelines haven't changed. I mean, the school guidelines haven't helped. The food's still unhealthy. So what, what would be a, 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 an example of a hook we could use? Any thoughts? Um, maybe something along the lines of, do you think that these new guidelines are working? Okay. Um, would I know what guidelines you're talking about at this point? Lunch guidelines. Okay. But one thing to keep in mind is the person who reads that first, you, you, here you're going to explain what you just said. Here you're going to explain what the, the food used to be bad. They come out with these new guidelines. Some people think it fixed it. Some people think it didn't. This is going to be when you give that background. Mm -hmm. So when you give your hook, you have to remember, people don't even know what you're going to talk about yet. So is there something else you could ask that, that, that might relate back and engage people? I know, it's, 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 it's kind of hard. What's, what's something, what are these two people debating? Uh, if the school lunch guides are working. Okay, guidelines. and guidelines. Okay, and what are, the, what are some of the foods that, um, that they don't want to be in the school lunch? Chicken fingers, pizza, all that junk food. Okay, so how could you pose a question incorporating those foods you just asked? Do you have these? Yes, go! Do you, do you have chicken fingers, pizza, and... Uh, what else is another potatoes one? Potatoes in your lunch? Yeah, they did use that. Boxed potatoes was an example. So, great idea. So Hadley says, hey, do you, not hey, you might have to use that, but, um, because we're, we would use hey if it weren't for a teacher, though, if you're writing it for right. informal right. language, right, but we know our audience is our teacher, so we wouldn't use hey. So we would say, um, do you, is, are there, um, do you have pizza, chicken fingers, and boxed potatoes in your school lunch rooms? Perfect hook, Okay. So let's write that down. So let's, where's my trusty eraser? So we're gonna erase our hook here. We're gonna say, do you have, can you see me here people? Do you have pizza, chicken fingers, and boxed potatoes? For your school lunch. For your school lunch. Okay, school, school, school lunch. lunch. For your school lunch. Now, good. Now, this is going to hook people, right? Like, why is he asking me that? That doesn't make any sense. Okay, Hadley, erase it, please. So now we need that important background, okay? And I'm not going to be able to fit it all here, but it would be something like some people argue, or do we need to say some people? Give me that eraser again. We know. Some parents. Author one, right? Author of, or you can say the author. Um, the author of the first article argues that despite the new guidelines, Food is still the same. The food is still the same. The author. Of the second article. Good. Of the second. Here, let's erase our thesis part for give us some room here. We'll move that down. The author of the second article. Um argues that these foods has has changed that the food has changed as a result of what of like the previous, the previous as a result of what what changed what changed the foods new what as a result of the new guideline good okay so now Still, up to this point, I don't know what Hadley believes, right? Up to this point, I don't know. I know the question. He's asking, hey, do you have it still present in your school lunches? He's telling me the background 
what's going on here. He, these two authors think something different, and then he now is going to tell me whether he thinks the school guidelines. However, because he disagrees, we have to have a transition word here before the thesis. However, Listen, mm -hmm. I believe, but that's bad. You can't. I can't because because if you didn't believe that, then you wouldn't be right. Good. Okay. So, however, then start straight out with what you came up with for your thesis. The you remember it? New guidelines? The new guidelines are... You want to see what you wrote? Yeah. Don't help. Okay. Do not help students because... They're still getting the same portion sizes. Should I say that? Portion sizes and foods good portion sizes and foods okay so now people and you can pause if you want to read this more carefully but hadley has essentially i'm gonna sneeze hold on allergies <coughs> not coronavirus <laughs> yeah i promise it's allergies all right do you have pizza chicken fingers and box potatoes for your school lunch the author of the first article argues that despite the new guidelines, the food is still the same. The author of the second article argues that the food has changed a result of the, as a result of the new guidelines. However, the new guidelines do not help students because they are still getting the same portion sizes and foods. Okay, hook, background, thesis statement. Okay, so in our next segment, we'll talk about how to go about that first paragraph or teak paragraph. Stay tuned. Thank you.